What's going on everybody? This is Armov from Houston Ensemble on the road and I thought I'd get this video going for you guys real quick because this is a really particular subject and we have a lot of ground to cover so let's jump into it so how to get a religious ritual abortion exemption as a satanist first of all this is done via the satanic temple if you do not know what the satanic temple is it is the largest public satanist organization of its kind to learn a little bit about what they do, you can just go to their Instagram. Familiarize yourself with some of the imagery, some of the mantras. Solve coagula, as above, so below. The Baphomet, the goat horns, the upside down pentagrams, the blood rituals, and generally all the dark visuals, blood visuals, and uh, the likes and the sorts. Lucian Greaves is the leader of the satanic temple he claims to be a secularist he claims to not literally believe in satan but he is really definitely into dark imagery and the imagery is associated with satanism something to think about keep this guy on your mind but let's get right into how to get that exemption letter so to do that, go directly to the Satanic Temple website, which we have right here. Look once again to all the amazing, beautiful dark imagery, the creepy looking goat, the evil pentagram upside down. And it's so wonderful. So let's go to the advocacy section. Go to ongoing campaigns. You'll have to scroll down to religious reproductive rights. Go to click more and go down to how is the satanic abortion ritual legally protected and directly you can download the exemption letter so this exemption letter is more like a framework or a template for you to give to the county clerk or your local judge if you're trying to get a abortion past the six week designated limit period as designated by the new Texas law, which I won't be getting into today, just the exemption form. If you read this down, you put your name, you put your date, put your address, and it reads, to whom it may concern, I'm a pregnant person and a saint is beginning the process of an abortion ritual. I am aware that state law implements generally applicable restrictions on abortions, however, State law also provides for religious exemptions to generally applicable rules which impose a substantial burden on religious beliefs or practices. This letter lays out my claim for a religious exemption to generally applicable restrictions on abortion. And you can read this down for you from the wording of this document. It is clear that the ritualistic abortion process is very important to the Satanic Temple. So, what can we do to learn a little bit more? It states here, under the Satanic Temple versus Texas case, the page where the Satanic Temple discusses their ongoing litigation against Texas State, the abortion ritual requires an abortion and two affirms her religious subscription to TST's third and fifth tenets, which we're going to take a look at here just a second. But before Ms. Doe, who is uh, the individual on behalf of whom the temple is doing the litigation, can get her abortion and therefore participate in the abortion ritual, the government has required that she get a sonogram. These, so assuming there's other things that they are rejecting, requirements substantially interfere with Ms. Doe's religious beliefs and practices for two reasons. First, the requirements are a precondition to Ms. Doe's ability to participate in a religious ceremony. It is substantial interference per se for the state to place a regulatory hurdle, one that costs money in front of a religious exercise. 
the state might as well tax and regulate on mass. So very interesting wording in order to legalize a ritualistic abortion practice, the violent termination of a life inside an individual with medical procedures. I want to real quick touch upon the tenants that are being cited here. Third and fifth tenants. Let's read the third and fifth tenants. They always sound really good when they're trying to sell you this religious idea. Three, one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. And five, Beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific fact to fit one's belief. And I totally agree with that. I am in such full support of that statement, actually. However, What does the actual ritual involve? We have a little bit of information here on this section of the website. It says here, for surgical abortions, prior to receiving any anesthetic or sedation, look at your reflection to be reminded of your personhood and your responsibility to yourself. Focus on your intent. Take deep breaths and make yourself comfortable. When you are ready, say the third tenet and fifth tenet aloud. You may now undergo the surgery. After the surgery is completed and any anesthetic has worn off, return to your reflection and recite your personal affirmation. Feel doubts dissipating and your confidence growing as you have just undertaken a decision that affirms your autonomy and free will. The religious abortion ritual is now complete. So, under what pretext, you might ask, is this even legal? Well, we have to be reminded of H.R. 1308, Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993, which in basic terms stipulates simply that it prohibits any agency, department, or official of the United States or any state government from substantially burdening a person's exercise of religion, even if the burden results from a rule of general applicability. So you can go ahead and familiarize yourself with this act. And the question would be, how does it apply in terms of this ritual abortion? Well, Texas State University did an interesting cover and in this section, the devil is in the details, which is again, so, so true. It truly is in the details. They talk about how a loophole term, the RFRA loophole can result in Swiss cheesing Texas new legislation or Swiss cheesing pre-existing exemption law. Meaning that any kind of institution with any sort of opinion and desire can come in and claim an exemption for various reasons. The question here, ladies and gentlemen, is if we are claiming to be morally on some high ground, if we are claiming that this organization is truly for the people and for the rights and liberties of the people, we must then put into question the moral framework from which this organization runs. And I want to ask you this. If the Catholic Church or the, satan the Satanic Temple said that they wanted religious exemption for pedophilia, just humor me here. What do you think the public response would be for religious exemption to pedophilia? What about the religious exemption to animal sacrifice? What would we think about baby chick sacrificing or embryo elephant sacrificing or embryonic dog sacrificing? Would we condone that? Our wonderful guest, Ryan Scroggins, a high level Mason leader of many occult temple practices and esoteric practices here in Houston, he made mention of some of the individuals who 
created the framework of modern day Satanists. Individuals such as Aleister Crowley, who I want to quote here real quick to provide a little more context for where some of these beliefs and practices may stem from. Aleister Crowley, in his commentary on the Book of Law, which is a very interesting esoteric piece that he wrote, says, The Beast 666, which is what he referred to himself as, ordains by his authority that every man and every woman and every intermediately sexed individual shall be absolutely free to interpret and communicate self by means of any sexual practices soever, whether direct or indirect, rational or symbolic, psychologically, legally, ethically, or religiously approved or no, provided only that all parties to any act are fully aware of all applications and responsibilities thereof. Moreover, the B-66 advises that all children shall be accustomed from infancy to witness every type of sexual act, as also the process of birth, lest falsehood fog and mystery stupefy their minds, whose error else might thwart and misdirect the growth of their subconscious system of soul symbolism. This isn't to say that the satanic temple necessarily agrees with Alistair or his teachings, but it's interesting that when it comes to the question of Satan, Lucifer, the Beast, 666, there's an interesting obsession or effort to involve ritualistically the minds of the children, to involve ritualistically the minds of the young, the bodies of the young. In this instance, it is sexual. In the instance of uh, ritual abortion, it is very, very bestial. It is very visceral. It is very bloody. And this is why I, I, I ask you, I don't want to make this judgment. I ask you, what do you think is this okay is this morally justified is this even religiously justified what do you think and i want to draw your attention also real quick to this clip i'm not going to show the whole thing just a little bit here because it is so so important to put a little bit more context about what we're talking about now the suction tip has not actually touched the child, even though the child is extremely agitated and moving in a violent manner. The child has now moved back to the profile view, and the suction tip is flashing once again across the screen. The child's mouth is now open, and we will see that again on a freeze frame in a moment. But this suction tip, which you can see moving violently back and forth on the bottom of the screen, is the lethal instrument which will ultimately tear apart and destroy the child. It is only after the fluid has been broken, the sac has been disrupted, that the tip will actually come against the child. But we can see the tip moving back and forth as the abortionist seeks the child's body. Once again, we see the child's mouth wide open in a silent scream in this particular freeze frame. This is the silent scream of a child threatened Im imminently with extinction. I'm not going to play the entire thing. I know that people have different beliefs and I understand that people will react differently. But once again, to put into question what we are trying to legally exempt, once again, what is the value of life? Is this infant sentient when it is fighting for its life against an abortion? Is it feeling something? Is it self-aware? Is it truly fighting? Is it simply agitated? Is its nervous system agitated? Can we make any sort of assumptions religiously, medically, spiritually or otherwise? And is it a little bit ironic that we have come to the state in which a satanist organization is now representative of the liberation and the rights of the common good people when do we get to say that the fetus is not sentient when is it sentient does it have rights because it is an inside the mother's body or does it have no rights yet because it is not technically exposed to the world 
Should these things be okay? Or should we scrutinize the assumptions and the advocacies being laid out by these organizations? Because indeed, as they say, the devil is really in the details. So with that, guys, let me know your thoughts. This is Armo from Houston Ensemble. Please subscribe. It'll only take you a second but it means so much to us. And I'll see you on the next video. It is widely known that the tobacco and diet industries lobby governments with scientific propaganda for years until proven guilty in court. The artificial treatment of our water is the next corporate deception. For example, virtually every nation in Europe has rejected the use of artificial fluoride. International studies since the 40s have repeatedly shown that endocrine and neurological effects increase after repeated consumption, even at the levels accepted by U.S. government. Epic Water Filters is the most thorough industry-grade filtration system that Houston Ensemble has ever used. They reduce heavy metals, upwards of 99.5%, such as lead and mercury, bacteria like E. coli, and poisons like chromium, nitrate, and fluoride. Join us in our journey to living a toxin-free life and get your epic water filter using discount code Houston Ensemble, lowercase, one word. That's Houston Ensemble, lowercase, one word, for 20% off your epic water filter.